Hi everybody, welcome back to Beth and Am. I'm Ellie Marie and today we are going to be doing a bookshelf review. All right, first and foremost, I want to apologize for the weirdness my camera is having in this video. It's constantly going in and out of focus. I don't know what was going on, but I do want to throw that out there and apologize to you for that. Hopefully I can get it figured out. I also had to switch to a new video editing software because the one that I was using just stopped working. It wasn't working very well. So hopefully the new one will work good. With that being said, let's get into the bookshelf review. All right, so bookshelf review. What exactly does that mean? Basically a bookshelf review is going to be my version of reviewing the books that I am currently reading that either fit with my current work in progress or fit with something else theme wise that is going on over at Bethanaeum. Today, I'm going to specifically talk about six works, four of which are short stories and two of which are technical books that I have been reading in order to prep for Preptober, which is prep for NaNoWriMo. And as this is part of the NaNoWriMo Chronicles, it makes sense that I would review these books here for you. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so four of the things I've been reading that I'm going to be talking about today are short stories. And I specifically chose short stories because I can read more of them and therefore get a little bit wider breadth of the psychological thriller horror genre that I'm going for, for my work for NaNoWriMo. The first one that I read is by Edgar Allan Poe, and I just happened to own his complete tales and poems. And for this particular NaNoWriMo, I decided to read a cast of Amontillado right here, which is one of his shorter works, but it's also one of his more well-known. And if you dig around on YouTube, you can find a version of this story that is read by Christopher Lee, and it is perfect. So if you don't have time to read it, but you maybe want to listen to an audiobook version of it, Christopher Lee is just perfection, perfection in reading this. So I highly suggest it and I will link it below in the description, of course. So The Cask of Amontillado is a perfect example of Edgar Allan Poe's ability to build a sense of the thriller and the horror using characters. He does use scene a bit, but not like he does characters. His, his works center very, very heavily on his characters. And this one in particular follows just a man kind of losing it in the middle of getting vengeance um, for his honor. It's a really good read. It's short. I think in this book, it's like three, four pages, four pages. So it's a short read, but it's really good. And again, you can listen to it in the YouTube link below. The next short story that I chose is called The Yellow Wallpaper, and it is by an author by the name of Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Charlotte is an American author, and unless you are into literature or into like that genre of literature, the psychological thriller or horror, you probably haven't read this work, but I highly, highly suggest it. It's one of my favorites, and it's actually like, it's a definitely reread for me because I've read it before and I just love it. And it's one of, I think, a perfect example of a psychological thriller. Not only does it tell a story that kind of makes your skin crawl, make you go, ooh, that's good. It also touches on several topics that were very sensitive at the time, such as the concept of a woman's subjugation to her husband, as well as the way mental illnesses were treated at the time through a forced kind of blanketing of creativity and intelligent kind of interaction. And so it's a really, really interesting read. It's really good. It makes you think, and it's just perfect for the genre. The last two short stories that I read that are creative works are by H.P. Lovecraft, who I have a rather particular obsession with. If you know much about me, you, you know that I love him. Uh, he's, to me, an enigma. He just is. He's kind of this weird contradiction of being this old world stately high society gentleman who struggled very very much so with these ideas of things that were dark and that were you know untoward and he just he was interesting interesting man so 
this particular book actually is strictly the Cthulhu Mythos Tales, which does not have either of the short stories in it that I read. I actually have them on my uh, Kindle reader, but I, I wanted to have a hard book to hold for you. So the two that I chose to read for him are The Outsider and Pikmin's Model. If you have not read any Lovecraft, I highly suggest these two first. They are outside of the Cthulhu Mythos, so they won't you know get into what is popular right now everybody everybody loves cthulhu um but it really introduces you to his style it really introduces you to some of the very base themes and subjects he has in a lot of his writing and it really opens up the cthulhu mythos world for you in a way that just reading these on your own can't so the first one the outsider focuses on the idea of fear of self and the fear of what is internal and what is inside of you and the fear of the one versus the many and it is a very interesting way of telling a story unlike edgar Allan poe whose characters really push forward the story lovecraft was really really good at helping having his scenes tell the story and it's just, it's amazing. It's a different way of writing and it's a different way of reading and processing a story. But really, his settings and his scenes really push forward the story. Uh, the characters do as well. He does not ignore his characters in any way. But the stories are less 100% focused on the characters. But they also focus on the surroundings and the settings. And they just really, really the themes and the feelings that Lovecraft is trying to get across in his work and the outsider is a perfect example of that so the second work by Lovecraft is Pickman's model and Pickman's model is a very popular Lovecraft story a lot of people know it and it can be found in a lot of popular cultural references one of my personal favorite because I'm a video game junkie is from Fallout 4 you can find a abandoned building that has like a really really gory art installation and it's kind of being occupied by raiders and it's called Pikmin's Gallery and it kind of is like a, a, a hat tilt to Lovecraft. Pikmin's model is actually the narrator is not Pikmin which is kind of the abnormal for a Lovecraft story. Usually the narrator is the one that the story is kind of named after and just kind of centers around in this particular story, it is a narrator who is telling a story about Pikmin, which is a man that he has met, an artist that he has met. And he kind of, in his dealings with him, has his eyes opened to this world that exists next to ours that we don't normally see. And so you see themes in this story of, instead of like the outsider fear of the self, you see fear of the outside, fear of the things that are outside of yourself and outside of your reality. And specifically a fear of something that is wrong, but is so close to being right that you don't notice and that it kind of invades your world and it, and it forces itself into your reality and you don't notice. And so that's kind of the fear that is in Pikmin's model. And it's it's also a really good read. It's short, it's quick, just like all the other short stories that I have chosen. And I've actually reread them all several times because of that. But I highly, highly suggest you read all of those if you are interested in psychological thrillers and horrors. And as I stated before, I love Lovecraft, adore him. So I highly suggest The Outsider and Pikmin's model. So the last two books on my list are technical books, and these are ones that I have touched on before, and I'm going to go over them briefly and what I have found about them and what I want to share about them with you. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. I'm going to start with writing and selling your mystery novel. I love this book. I have my little, my little marker in it, and as you can see, it's not very far in right there, but I basically, I read through the book. And now I'm going back and I'm working through the exercises. The things that Hallie Efron has you work through in the exercises and the worksheets are wonderful for any beginning writer, even if you're not writing a mystery novel. It, I highly suggest this if you are a beginning writer, even if you're not writing a mystery novel. The exercises in here are really, really good. They break down a lot of the different parts, such as characters, plotting, setting. 
to make it easy, make it easy to digest and easy to start and easy to work through. And I just love, love the exercises in this. As far as using it to get into like a mystery thriller kind of novel like I'm working on, it was very helpful because like I've said many times before, I've never written a mystery or a psychological horror or anything like that. And so it does have some insight for me, but I found that really overall, it's mostly just a beginning writer's tool and it's very, very effective at that. The last book on my list is The Scene Book by Sandra Schofield. And I'm going to be completely honest with you, I'm not 100% through this book, but I've really enjoyed it. It's been really, really good. If you are a new writer and you're not really 100% on your feet yet, maybe not this book for you. This book is, is a lot more technical in nature than this one. This one is really good for beginners. This one is good if you kind of already have your feet in the writing world. Not like heavily, you don't have to be a really established writer, but this this is more, she just, she presents a lot of different theories. And if you are new, it would be difficult to sift through and find the ones that are best for you. But if you've already kind of found your feet as a writer and you kind of know your style and how you write, this is a wonderful book. I highly suggest it as well. All right, hopefully you enjoyed today's bookshelf review and I hope that some of those interest you and maybe you were introduced to something new. And as always, I'd like to take this moment to suggest that you subscribe and hit that little bell so that you can get notifications when I upload new videos, which are every Tuesday and Friday. And the blog is uploaded over on bethanam.com every Monday and Thursday. And so I look forward to seeing you out there. And as always, thank you very much for your time and I appreciate you. Bye.